possible. But with that being said, we are going to be jumping into the next game. We have Matt Beach going up actually against Eog with the uh, with the Inkling. I think this is an excellent choice. How do you feel about it? Uh, I I feel a lot better about this one. I think Inkling can definitely uh, keep up with the pace of the game a lot better. And Inkling, another character that I think you know, once they get in, they can rack up a ton of combo damage. Mm -hmm. Uh, against a character like Mega Man. The problem is, though, I think he's going to have a little bit of a, a tough time getting in on Map Beach and all those projectiles. Yeah, for sure. But honestly, if anybody can do it, it's Inkling. He's able to low profile onto everything. He has so many, like, really active hitboxes that can hit through those pellets. Tries to get something going with the uh, with the falling up air, but still able to get a bit of damage in the process. Really spacing that back air beautifully. You know, it's one of Inkling's most potent tools in neutral, and E-Dog is making really efficient use out of it. An early lead for E-Dog. Only 60% on him, and Matt Beach mm -hmm. practically at kill percent here, but again, here's the part where things are uh, going to be difficult for E-Dog. Can he find a way in? Can he find a way to take those stocks? That back air did so much, and now it's just about dead even. Uh, yeah, for sure. Right now, Matt Beach is the one controlling center stage, forces the low recovery with those empty jumps, not able to actually connect that down. Gonna be holding on to Metal Blade. This is a scary position to be in. Uh, you know, Mega Man can get Metal Blade into up tilt. Mega Man can get Me Metal Blade into, like, forward air. There's so much pressure. Uh, you just have to respect his shield and just be constantly, uh, cognizant of that option. And the other problem for e Dog too, is now he's out of ink, and now Matt Beach can kind of push the advantage here because Inkling has to run away. He's going to be able to get a little bit of ink back here. That's enough to possibly land something. That's a lot of shield pressure. Not going to be able to punish it, though. That back air, not going to be able to take the stock either. Can e Dog find a way back to ledge? He does. Can Ooh, he find a way out? No! it is. The Z drop metal blade into the back air again. Like, that move really does everything for Mega Man. It's able to convert it into everything. Able to get the down throw, but no follow-up with the forward air. Probably not enough frame advantage uh, from that uh, down throw quite yet. Needed a little bit more percent on the board to be able to nail it. Great stuff by Matt Beach to be able to take that first stock and get back to ledge safely here. 14% on E-Dog, make that 21 and now pushing his advantage. I feel like Matt Beach, really the, the uh, I guess the key for this, at least through the first stock has been Matt Beach's stage control. Yeah, absolutely. Matt Beach is able to give himself the space that he needs to pull out Metal Blade. The way that he is playing out of the corner as well when he is in disadvantage is excellent. He's sitting in shield, he's waiting, uh, just waiting for E-Dog to overcommit to something like an up smash. And right now, E-Dog is just struggling to be able to take the stock out. Overcommits off stage, gives Matt Beach stage control. This is the last place that you want to be against him because, wow, he is just running away with us. 66% already, and it feels like E-Dog has had opportunities to at least get in on, on Matt Beach's defenses. I, I, at least I'm recalling one time when he dashed in on the shield and then just kind of backed away rather than going for a grab. And now sitting at 103, this is dangerous. He needs to be able to find a way to take this stock to at least have a shot here. Because if he loses this stock now, things are looking very dangerous. Ooh, yeah. I mean, I have to say, that side be just so much pressure. It forces your opponent to completely stop moving, to stop trying to get stage, to, to stop going for hits, uh, and just wait and shield. And Matt Beach is able just to take advantage of that. Um, I would like to see E-Dog start to go for a little bit more tomahawks, maybe a couple more grabs, because Matt Beach is, Matt Beach is effectively shielding everything E-Dog wants to do right now. Yeah, and you can tell, too, that E-Dog is uh, he's able to find ways in. They, the openings are there. Inkling is a, a fast character, but that Nair is actually going to be able to take it. The pellets, just a strong hit there off stage, is going to be able to do it. And Matt Beach living to 172%. This is a massive first stock for him. Oh my gosh. But the, the splat bomb, that was such an unexpected way to take that stock. Matt Beach wasn't even expecting it either, just completely missing the tech there. Tries to go for the pellet mix up into down it. Oh geez, that was that was a that was an interesting setup. Uh, but E Dog definitely had more than enough time just to be able to shield that. Back into neutral here as E Dog, again back into the corner, can't get the follow up off of the saw blade drop. But it, again, it just feels like Matt Beach has done a, a very good job of controlling stage 
And that really hasn't allowed E Dog to. I mean, E Dog's character, Inkling, has the speed to get in, but E Dog just has not been able to really convert those options into anything. I mean, the issue is right now is that E Dog is jumping um, and dashing in a lot of mid range space where Matt Beach already has a pellet out. Uh, e Dog is going to have to focus dash back so that they can start running in or so that they can start jumping in. Otherwise, they just keep getting the jumps called out. They're in too close of a range. Their burst options are just being called out consistently. Matt Beach's option coverage is immaculate right now. It definitely feels like he's got. Uh... It feels like he's kind of got the reads right now, the download complete, at least to some degree. He's, he's covering a lot of the options, and there's the ledge from the back air, too, to clean up game number one. Uh, I have to say, I, I, I geek out about Mega Man. I think, I think um, he's a really interesting character to watch. Um, there's, there's so many, like, really, like, intricate parts of his play. Matt Beach was so tight with a lot of his spacing. Uh, just kept going through so many dip, like different mix-ups, especially at ledge. Is he going to go through the ledge trap? Is he going to go through, you know, a ledge trump attempt? Um, Matt Beach made himself so ambiguous that game. E-Dog was not able to get a solid read on his movement, wasn't able to find any jump-ins. Uh, Matt Beach just executed his game plan so, so well, uh, adapted and, you know, mixed in the right places. Um, and and E-Dog was just not able to get too much started as a result. Oh, Metal Blade into back here. Beautiful. Z drop stuff will never not be sick. And I mean, you you talked about it too. It felt like, I, despite E Dog being able to take that early advantage, here's a look at that other kill, that second stock, just the the going out there and getting the the edge guard. Just that op option coverage from Matt Beach this game after probably the first 30 seconds of the match was on point. Yeah. Just, just, it seemed that E Dog did not have any of the space that he needed to be able to maneuver around. You know, some of those lemons that Mega Man was throwing out. He was constantly cornered. He was constantly in these really uncomfortable mid ranges where Inkling actually lacked the burst option to be able to get in. Um, he needed to find a way to reset the situation, get a little bit more space for himself, and then try to break space in, right? Or preemptively throw out really active hitboxes. Something like Inkling's Florida in this situation would be extremely helpful because it is so active, it is out there for so long, you can effectively clank through everything that Mega Man is looking for. Um, so I would have I would have liked to see that a little bit more from, uh, from E-Dog that game. Picks and bans for stages also coming through here. Bans on Smashville, Lila, and Yoshi's. And it looks like Battlefield will be the pick here for game number two. Character swap as well. The Byleth entering the arena instead of the Inkling for E-Dog. Mm -hmm. Battlefield um, is an interesting stage choice. Mega Man, obviously, he's able to play back from a bit of a distance, but Byleth, having such big disjoints, she might be able to find a lot of those jump ins uh, from, from Mega Man's diagonals. So it's going to be up to Matt Beach to be able to call out those jumps. I like how E Dog is starting to pace this a little bit, by the way, with how, you know, just sort of playing back, throwing out a couple of arrows, making Matt Beach the, like less inclined to pull out Metal Blade. Pretty neutral off the start here, but. Matt Beach off to a slight lead. Still, the percentage is just about even. And I like the play around these platforms as well. Both of them just kind of using them to their advantage once they, they don't feel like they can win a neutral option. Just jump up, let it let the situation reset. Just controlling the stage, waiting. Excellent patience. No punish on the greed grab, though. Gets a leaf blade. Uh, oh, excuse me, the leaf shield, but gonna be sending the wrong direction. This could very much so be the stock and a beautiful edge guard from E Dog. Oh my goodness, nailing to up the off stage like that? That was sick. That was so clean. No fear from E Dog, but Matt Beach answering right back, going deep as well with another pellet kill, evening up the stocks. Both of these players not afraid to go out for edge guards. So playing back from a distance a little bit, had a good idea on catching that jump from the ledge, but just pulled the trigger a little bit too early. Matt Beach was able to connect the downer nonetheless. 
Man, I gotta say, that leaf shield, uh, it's, it's, you know, leaf shield is not an appropriate name for it because, wow, that move just pressures everybody else's shield so well. You can cover tech options with it, you can just cross them up, um, especially if they don't have, like, the fastest, the fastest, mashiest, uh, out of shield options. Yeah, I was gonna say, it doesn't feel like Violet has an easy answer to that move other than just jump over it, right? Ooh, the, and the damage it racks up too, already at, at 95 now. And that forward smash, not gonna be able to kill. This is a tough recovery. He's gonna be able to make it back. Ah, uh, but oh. e Dog gonna be over committing off stage with the down air. So, so late on being able to connect that. And again, just fishing for it. So I'm really questioning that choice each time that e Dog does go for it, because of course it has a high reward, but instead of trying to get back onto the stage before Matt Beach maybe getting some corner pressure, maybe setting up a ledge trap, e Dog just instead puts himself back off stage, loses tempo as a result, uh, and lets Matt Beach just get back on basically for free each time. He's eating a bunch of percent for it too already great at 160 catch. and 80 on map beach great catch as you say map beach able to take that second stock e-dog on his last stock has to win this match if he wants to extend the set i love the way that map beach has been conditioning with pals this whole game you know he saw that e-dog you know has started switching from shielding after getting hit by pellet to starting to jump out of it so map beach hit him with the pellets waited and was able to call out that jump and that's exactly what you have to be doing and an excellent spike to be able to clean that one up Matt Beach. Wow. And I feel like e Dog might have been able to live that if he drifted a little bit to the right. He might have been able to get like that tether bounce on the on the side of the stage. Maybe. Uh, I mean, I was kind of waiting for this. That's the one thing about these tether recoveries. They are susceptible sometimes. And the spacing by Matt Beach to get that down air out in time to catch that recovery. Great mm -hmm. stuff. Great reaction by him. And this game, I it, it feels very awkward because oh, it started off again. E Dog played fantastic for the first stock, able to get that spike off the up B. But then Matt Beach just found a way to adapt and respond. Poor Mega Man, he just he just died. You know, you, you, like like off stage, he just it didn't matter who percent he was at. You know, he just got nailed up B. That was and then and then he just did basically like the exact same thing to E Dog. That was so cool. Um, I love the way that both of them committed there. Uh, no, uh, B being a thing that can, like, connect a little bit more consistently offstage is a terrifying prospect, I have to say. Uh, up B just coming out a little bit faster, you know, uh, means that you're gonna be able to land it easier. You're gonna be able to convert hits off of it. It's... Why did they buff Violet like that? <laughs> I, I, I do not know, but... Sure. Yeah, I, I, I mean, regardless of that, DePaul, I mean, great stuff to Matt Beach once again to take that set. And with that, the scoreline 10 to 1, mm -hmm. an early lead here for DePaul. And we talked about it earlier. It, it feels like it's very important. It's hard to come back in this league. So to, to have an early advantage through the first two sets, this is a tall task. I mean, we talked about it too. DePaul's been playing on fire. They have only dropped one set 